Welcome back to the Sun for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you Fonolif Cascade from Yuri Turov. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Additionally, if you would like to participate in the giveaway, please do check the instruction in the video description. Please make sure that the giveaway is still open. Okay, let's kick off. This is going to be probably more of a guided tour than actually a tutorial, more of a demonstration as um, a funnel lift cascade as uh, a quite um, unique reverb and diffuser processor is quite self-explanatory through the internal guide. Indeed, you can see here a question mark and when you activate it, you have this additional section on the bottom here, which guides you through all the different fields, which I'm going to use as well through the guide too, because um, it's, um, it's really good. Well, in terms of setup, um, I just have a simple ground piano as an audio source inside the AUM, and then I have the reverb diffuser here as an insert effect. So uh, straight out of the box, we have some presets in this one, animated atmosphere. You click on it, of course, you have a factory bank and number of preset, presets, and you can save, delete them, import and export and select multiple one of those as well. So nice and simple. So let's hear it. Okay, as you can hear, you can uh, obtain very signif significant different results based on the different parameters you have on the screens. And I must say, in order to understand the funnel lift, you need to have some background on reverberation and diffusion um, theory. Or you go by uh, what you hear, of course. Really nice. So as I said, I'm going to use the internal um, help as uh, it is really self-explanatory. Here, as you can say, you have a section for the input, the diffusion process inside here, the loop in here with feedback. Then you have modulation and depth. Here you can adjust the, the dumping filter response. And then here you have your drive and wet output with gain, which you can also lock in terms of mixing so that uh, it doesn't change as you change preset, which is really, really good. Here, this part here is very straightforward in terms of you adjusting the modulation and the depth. This, of course, is, as the up says, is modulation of diffuser stages, but of course, you need to increase the depth to hear it. And as I said, on the help here, this is the amount of pitch change induced by the random modulation here. Really nice. You double click, of course, on each of the control, they go back to the default. Okay, let's start on the left hand side. Here you have your input, you start with width, and this is the stereo width of the input signal. Okay, when it is zero, double click, you set it to zero, is the sum to mono. This 
is very much depends on the input signal. Of course, 100% is preserved the full width. And then you can also go negative by where he actually sw um, swap the left and right channel, of course. Here you have um, high cut and low cut. So you can uh, adjust the cut off of the high cut filter or the low cut filter, which are, is applied to the diffuser input. You can hear that the cutoff changed for the high cut um, filter. Let's do the low cut. And it is nice to see the different time for controls used here instead of being just a normal dial, um, which this orange line which goes across uh, the rectangle. Really nice. Then you go to the diffusion part and you start with stages here, the number of all pass diffuse stages. Of course, the less you have, um, the shorter will be the reverberation, something that um, I have to, um, I've tried actually to create with Odalus and it works really nicely. You can change the shape as well uh, here, so um, you eff effectively um, uh, change, um, affect the diffusion and envelope. Um, so, note what happens when you go up to one. Let's cut. And you can see that also from the picture here. Longer one at around one, but just below one. Interesting effect by where some parts are accentuated, so definitely the envelope has been changed here. Also pay attention here at these uh, visualizer here because it gives you an indication um, of what is happening between the diffuser stages. Uh, uh, really interesting. So for example, when I change the distance, you can see the distance is affected here on the visualization. <laughs> You have spread here as well, which is the spacing, of course. And you can link the two here with this button so that they are aligned, but you don't have to. Again, let's reset these. Not too long. Here you have controls that um, um, changes the time of set um, between the different parallel stages between the left and the right channel, as the help says. And then you have the inertia here, the time it takes uh, for new distance or spread to settle. Okay, let's reset these as default. Here you have the looping, as I was mentioning at the beginning, you have feedback here at the center, the amount of feedback around the, all the um, all pass diffuser. Okay, so the longer it is, of course, the longer decay. So as a, a traditional feedback. You can hear it last um, much shorter than when it is longer or higher values here on the control. Then here you have uh, the ability to flip the signal polarity. Um, for each pass, actually, they go through the feedback loop, which is quite interesting. And then here you have also the ability to swap, uh, swap the left and right channels of the feedback signal, um, which is quite interesting. And it gives you, as the help says, the ability to have more complex modulation when you have, complex, uh, when you have of course, modulation on.
I like these two controls, the top one practically freezes, uh, set the feedback to 100 and then stop accepting new signals, so you play some... And then, of course, uh, it works better if you have a, a, a smaller feedback. But you can also freeze. And then a reverberation, of course, um, sees for new input. But in the background, you can still hear the previous one based on the, um, the keys that I already pressed on the keyboard. So this one set it to um, infinite while still um, letting new signals going through while this one stopped the signals going through. Then here you have a pre-delay, so the time, the delay time applied uh, before sending the input through the diffusion cascade, and then you also have delay time applied before the feedback um, is back to the output. So, um, sorry, delay time applied before the feedback um, the output of the diffusion cascade to its input. Okay, and you can align the two as well, and you can have it by subdivision as well of your host. Okay. Okay. So you can hear the pre delay there. Oh, one second. Okay, and of course, you can link the two together as well. Here you have modulation on depth, we already covered it. Then here you have the dumping filter response, um, which can be controlled actually using uh, the graph or clicking on the graph itself. So you can adjust, uh, uh, for example, up and down the gains, the shelf gains, and then left and right with these um, two vertical lines, you can adjust the crossover frequency, or you can use the dials here for low gain, mid gain, high gain, and the low, low frequency, high frequency, like so. Okay, and here you have the dry and wet uh, mixer. Really nice. And um, of course you gain, as I explained, and the lock-in, so as you, when you change presets, this is locked. Here you have the change of the color of the skin, which is really nice, and UI colors are changing according to this for uh, day and night, which uh, becomes really useful depending on when you do uh, your work. So. Uh, the great characteristic of a uh, phonolith cascade is the ability to set all these different parameters. If you like, you can go quite detailed in terms of changing how your reverberation and diffusion processing are um, created um, or processed on your sounds. And that's the one of the key differences compared to other uh, reverb and uh, diffusion processor but of course it comes um, with the price of actually really understanding what's uh, what's happening in the intricate details of uh, the reverb effect but still very unique i really enjoyed playing with it and again it will be definitely be part of uh, some of my uh, well a preset um, or effects library i should say okay thank you very much see you next time bye